You're watching the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series with our focus today on the visual cloud. The demand for video media content just keeps on growing, whether that's 4K UHD, live internet streaming or immersive AR VR media. Joining me now to explain how Intel is supporting this transformation and helping its partners and customers to deploy new edge-based services is Lynn Comp, Vice President, Network Platforms Group and General Manager, Visual Infrastructure Division at Intel. Lynn, very nice to see you again. Lovely to see you again, Guy, you know, virtually and, and over the internet. Absolutely, it's a new reality, so much focus on video. Um, a lot has changed in a very short time. The, the, the pace of, of, of innovation, the rate of change is phenomenal. What exactly is happening in the industry today with how media is both delivered and consumed? There have been a number of just unbelievable changes that I think even in the industry, when you could see the change coming, you didn't expect how quickly it would happen. And one of my favorite examples right now is with the different shelter in place orders, things like immersive media are starting to be worked with in a completely different way, where it's not just about whether you're wearing a headset in sort of your own world and being able to see a 360 video, but you're actually interacting with the content and you're interacting with curated content for things that would have normally been concerts and stadiums, but we can't be together in concerts and stadiums. And the, the music and the stories that we love continue to help us get through this time. So you'll see things like immersive media really taking off in a totally unique format as well as things like low latency content, such as this kind of broadcast, for example, or some of the interactive gaming experiences. Those have both really surged in terms of their use patterns, uh, just because of some of the unprecedented ways that we're having to be connected while we're being remote. And what is Intel's response to these trends? How are you helping your customers? We take a end-to-end -end approach. I think the main thing that's really important with this time is to recognize that the service providers have a range of different services they're trying to deliver. And they're serving a number of different customers who want different experiences. So a video on demand customer, they are paying in general for a subscription. They want the absolute best visual quality that they can get on whatever screen they happen to be viewing on. And so that is one service experience. And at the same time, that service provider has to optimize bandwidth because as we're all learning, bandwidth is a precious resource. It's not a commodity. And so they're balancing quality and bandwidth. If you're somebody who's interactive gaming, you are going to be really focused on low latency and processing at the edge because the experience of the game really does depend on how interactive it is and your experience as a player and how many lives you have and how much gameplay you get is also determined a little bit by that latency experience so those two parameters are really really a forcing function right now for all of us to be able to interact with content to become curators ourselves and to really in some way have a new experience as a result of sheltering in place so what are the pain points for service providers in delivering these services and and how can the edge help with um, alleviating these so there's a few pain points. Uh, some are obvious, latency, um, being able to have data available as quickly as possible and not having to either clog the network with content that doesn't need to be moved from one place to another. That's one piece. The other piece is bandwidth. Um, bandwidth is a precious resource. And, you know, we always hope every generation of networks that it's free and plentiful. But then we find something interesting like 4K HD video and then it's becoming a little bit more scarce. So balancing bandwidth. I think the interactivity of the experience. There are studios that dream of being able to work with creators anywhere they happen to be. They don't have to be in a specific geography. And so that kind of creation opportunity, wherever you happen to be, has become even more important some of these people are, they might be in the same city as the studios, but they're still having to work from home. So all of these different pain points, bandwidth, latency, cost, user experience, how is the content being curated? How do we let somebody opt into an experience? All of those are things that are forcing service providers 
to look at extensible hardware platforms, a portfolio that can move from one experience to another easily, uh, extensible software, as well as an ecosystem, because it's very difficult to be a one-size-fits-all, one-source shop for every experience on the planet. And what about Intel Select Solutions? How do they help the service providers? The thing with the Select Solutions that's really exciting is it takes some of these known profiles, things like CDN transcode, um, things like media analytics, and being able to choose between a high quality stream or 24 streams that are doing a little bit more scan for ad insertion. It gives you a recipe to start from that isn't as um, a small building blocks, but it's actually giving the service provider a leap forward of things that are pre-tested. And so the select solutions, Intel in collaboration with hardware and software providers are already tested and pre-configured for many of these use cases. And that gets that service provider a little bit further down the road in time to market, being able to have that experience deployed quickly. So are there any new announcements around Intel Select Solutions for the media industry? One of our exciting disclosures that's a new update to our Media Analytics Select Solution is that we now have Integer 8 or Int 8 support with Intel Deep Learning Boost. And that gives us two and a half times the performance that we were seeing earlier. So really exciting in terms of a performance update. And then in terms of usability and ease of use or faster time to market, we've also combined our VCAC, our video analytics card with something like OpenNess. OpenNess is a great utility. It's open source. It's allowed many other companies to be able to very quickly get a network connection at the edge so that they can go ahead and very quickly set up new services at the edge. So we both have OpenNess in conjunction with the Visual Cloud Analytics card, as well as Deep Learning Boost enabled with OpenVINO in the Integer 8 framework so that we can get an acceleration of up to two and a half times. Now we have a number of sessions coming up on Visual Cloud as part of the V-Summit. What will your partners be talking about in today's sessions? So I think the overall theme that's really exciting is edge processing. And what we're finding is just how important it is to have those user experiences closer to the users and where the data is being created or consumed. So we have Lenovo and Celnex talking about a really fascinating collaboration between Lenovo on their select solution, as well as Celnex and their tower properties and getting that much closer to the users who are creating or consuming this new kind of data. And then we have CenturyLink, who have been in the industry of content delivery for many, many years. They're a service provider, they have CDNs, and they'll be talking about some of the optimizations and experiences they've been optimizing and how they've been prepared and then also seeing new trends in this new normal that we're all facing. Well, Lynn, for now, thanks very much for joining us. And we look forward to hearing more from Intel and its partners later. And don't forget, you can watch more interviews and discussions on the Visual Cloud right here as part of the Intel Network and Edge vSummit series. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.